We are kicking off a brand new series entitled Walk It Out. Yeah, Walk It Out because this series is all about using our feet to exemplify and display our faith. And we want to walk this thing out. We want to achieve the things that God has for us. And it's going to require us to put in some work to put in some effort, and we want to just ride this wave. I believe, I was telling um, the Link Squad, I believe that we are in a season of faith as a church. We're believing God for so many things. We're believing God to do things as a church. But even individually, I believe God wants to do something special in your life, and it's going to require faith. Okay, it's going to require faith. So let's go to Matthew chapter 14. I'm going to read out of the NIV version. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Let's pause right there. Um, Today's subject is, there's levels to this. (laughs) There's levels to this. Let's pray quickly for the word. God, your word is spirit. It is life. It is effective. Now, God, do your work with your word. Put every devil on the run. Ignite and light a spark of faith in our hearts and our minds today that our lives will never be the same. Thank you for your word in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. On your way down to your seat, just tell somebody that's next to you, there's levels to this, bro. Yeah, man. Um, Or sis. There's levels to this thing. Faith has levels. The Bible declares to us that God has given unto us a measure or to every man a measure of faith. So when you are born, you are given a measure of faith. But there are levels to faith. There are people that achieve great uh, greatness in life um, because of their faith, because of their great and heightened level of faith. We also know, based on the Bible and what it tells us, that when the Spirit is giving out gifts, the gifts of the Spirit, you have the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, but you also have a gift of the Spirit, which is the gift of faith. And there are people in this life that are able to achieve greatness because of the magnitude of their faith. And it lets us know that because faith has levels, that there are things that we can do to strengthen our faith, to climb the ladder of faith. It's as if God has us in his gymnasium of faith. And the only way for our faith to grow and increase is us to work this thing out and for us to exercise our faith. And as we walk through life, our faith is supposed to get stronger and stronger. And this is what he does with his disciples. And the text that we read puts us in this story where Jesus tells his disciples to go across the lake via boats. 
and he will meet them on the other side. But what we see in the text is that Jesus intersects their journey across the lake and they are sailing in the boat. The disciples are, but Jesus is coming to them walking on the sea, walking on the lake. Now we must take note of the scene, the picture that is painted by the writer Matthew. Matthew wants us to notice that the disciples are in a boat, but Jesus is walking via his feet. And you have the comparing, the contrasting, the juxtaposition of the mode of transportation of the disciples versus the mode of transportation of Jesus. And you would think the only way to cross a lake would be to get in a boat. But Jesus, he is, he is unveiling and he is revealing and he is exposing his disciples to a greater realm of understanding. J Jesus is intersecting their journey because he wants to show them something. He wants to show them something that is supernatural because they're in a boat. That is natural, but Jesus is walking across the sea, and that is supernatural. And what Jesus wants to do to his disciples, he wants to expose them to the possibilities of faith, to the possibilities of the supernatural. We must conclude then that faith operates not in the natural, but faith operates in the supernatural and if we are going to live our lives in the realm and the domain of faith we have to be willing to be exposed to the supernatural yes I believe that faith exists in a realm called the supernatural and God when he is moving in our lives he is often trying to expose us to the supernatural I believe in this season God is about to expose somebody to the supernatural I believe in this season and in your family or maybe in your career, you're about to see God intersecting your life supernaturally because natural laws can't give you what you've been praying for. I feel God already in this sermon. The laws of the earth will not be able to push past all of the attacks of hell that has surrounded your life. And you're going to need to pull on the supernatural. And sometimes Jesus will collide with you in an emphatic way so that he can show you the supernatural. I was praying and I was studying and I felt in my spirit that God wants to expose link church to the supernatural. I'm not talking about the ordinary nor the average, but I'm talking about supernatural visitations from God. I believe that people in our church are about to start getting supernatural dreams and supernatural visions and supernatural encounters and the things that God has in store for you are only going to happen when you embrace the supernatural and I declare as I kick the door in on this sermon I declare that God is bringing our church into a supernatural season I feel it right there that God is about to supernaturally do something in your finances and supernaturally do something in your body supernaturally open a door that you can't open by yourself stop closing off your eyes and your spirit to the supernatural but it's time for you to embrace the supernatural Jesus is walking and they are sailing because Jesus wants them to encounter something that they've never seen before. They're in a boat 
and he's walking with his feet. And I believe that when we step into supernatural realms, <clears throat> that's when God begins to take us to places that we only have dreamed of. That God begins to stretch our faith in such demonstrative ways that we see him differently. You see, the disciples are on this boat and Jesus is walking to them and they don't recognize him. And they believe that it's a ghost. Because they don't understand that God has the free reign to show up in whatever, whatever form he wants to. And sometimes we box God into our little idea of what he must look like, sound like, feel like, taste like. But there are times when God switches in and flips the script on you. And he'll show up in another form. And it's interesting because the Bible says that when they see Jesus, whom they don't know to be as Jesus yet, they believe it's a ghost. It's dark. If you read other translations, it's between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And the wind is blowing and there's a storm on the lake. And they can't really make out who is approaching them or what is approaching them. So they jump to the conclusion that it's a ghost. <laughs> and what I saw was interesting because it's like fear arrives on their boat way before faith does. <laughs> and, and it doesn't take much for them to default to fear. That their knee-jerk reaction is to retreat in fear. And I want somebody to hear me today that I believe in our culture and in our day, a lot of Christians and a lot of people, their default reaction when they go through seasons of an uncertainty is to retreat in fear. And I want to ask you, what is your default reaction when you go through instability and uncertainty? When you're not sure what's going on, is it your natural reaction to think fearful thoughts? Is it your natural reaction to think negative thoughts? I believe that the Bible shows us today that these disciples who just saw Jesus feed 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish, they don't have enough faith for it to arrive first. But fear comes on the boat before faith ever does. And you may be sitting here today and saying, that's not me. Well, it's got to be somebody because all the media has to do is announce that there's a gas shortage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Christians and everybody runs to the gas station, Michelle, without stopping to pray, without stopping to hear what God is saying to you. With a full tank of gas, you wait in line. Yeah, yeah. Because your default is fear. And our culture is so engrossed and enveloped and shrouded in this cloud of fear that all that has to happen is one little report and we run for the hills. And I'm asking the question today, where is your faith? Is the hardware that you've been wired with, is that default in your hardware wired to fear or wired to faith? Huh? Do you drop to your knees first when you get a bad report? Or do you start to think that the world is against you? Do you drop to your knees and start to pray in 
faith or do you run and call your girl on the phone and start to complain? What is your knee jerk reaction? Because a lot of us are a lot like these disciples and fear comes before faith comes. But I want to reorient and rewire your brain today and your spirit today and your soul today. I want you to hear me clearly. You have got to switch your default button. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord has to lift up a standard in your life. Why else are you serving God if you're just like everybody else and your default is fear? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. I'm not saying don't live your life prepared. I'm not saying don't make provision. I'm not saying don't be a good steward. But I'm saying sometimes you got to check with heaven first. In a gas line with gas tanks in your trunk, risking your life, looking crazy. <laughs> looking crazy. Because fear too often enters our boat before faith does. Let me keep pushing. I want to talk about water walkers today. Because if you are going to do this thing called faith, you have got to embrace the fact that you are a water walker. And the place that God has destined for you is out on the water. The first thing I want you to know is that water walkers are magnetic. If you're taking notes, put it down. Water walkers are magnetic because when Jesus um, replies to the disciples, he says, don't be afraid, it's me. And Peter says, if it's you, Lord, ask me to come out on the water. And Jesus says, come. There's something about Peter, something about his faith that is magnetic. There's something about the pull that is on Peter that causes him to step out of the boat and begin to walk on water. And I want to tell somebody something about faith today. Faith is a pull. It is a draw. You can't always explain why you're stepping out of the boat. You can't always explain to your best friend why you are starting the business. You can't always explain to your mama why you are moving to a new apartment or a new house. You can't explain always to your coworker why you are switching jobs because there's something about water walkers. Water walkers are magnificent. There's something about when God is calling you out of your boat. You can't stay. You can't be held back. You can't be restrained. You can't be restricted because there is something in the unknown of God. There is something on the lake of God that is calling you to greater you can't always articulate it. You can't always identify it. But there's something about when God or Jesus says, come. You got to come out of your boat. You have to come out of your situation. You have to come out of your low thinking. You got to come out of your poor mentality. You have to come. Come And somebody that's watching me online today, somebody in the room today, you don't know how to identify it. All you know is that you feel the pull of God's voice calling you out into the deep. And you know that there's something magnetic about your life. And God is pulling you because you are a water walker. I need somebody to... To lift up your voice and say, I am a water walker. Mm -hmm. I can't stay on this boat. I know the majority is on this boat, 
but I have to step out of this boat because something is pulling my heart. Something is pulling my spirit and I have to go. I want to push somebody this afternoon. You have to go. You have to go. I don't know what your situation is, but you have to go for it. You have to get out of this boat. You will always be uncomfortable until you step out. Mm -hmm. You will always feel indifferent and ambivalent and unsettled until you step out. Because there is something that is pulling you. Something that is calling you. The pull of God's voice is stronger than the gravitational pull of the boat. And you have to step out. The next thing I want you to know is that water walkers walk on top of what other people drown in. Water walkers have the ability to walk on top of what other people drown in. Because Peter isn't really sure if this is Jesus. Y'all don't believe me? Let's go to the text, verse 28. Peter is not sure if this is Jesus. And Peter says, Lord, if it is you, if, <laughs> you thought you had to know for sure. If, you, you're, you're sitting on the boat waiting for God to actually affirm. <laughs> you don't really know what faith is. Peter is stepping out on an if. <laughs> because water walkers walk on top of what other folk drown in. Peter doesn't really know if this is Jesus. But Peter would rather drown in the waters of failure than suffocate in the boat of regret. Y'all not with me today. Peter will rather drown in the waters of failure failure then suffocate on the boat of regret and I'm trying to tell somebody today that if you are a water walker you don't have to know a hundred percent you don't have to have an angel visit you yeah you don't have to have a prophet speak over your life yeah, you just have to feel and sense and be willing to take a risk because water walkers are risk takers. And I would rather try and this turn out to not be God and miss it than stay on the boat. And sit here in regret knowing that it was God. I, I would rather try and it turns out to not work out than miss my moment because I stayed on the boat. And too many folk in here are missing their moment. You're missing your moment because you're unwilling to try to get the house you are unwilling to apply for that position you are unwilling to step out in case it doesn't work but what happens if you miss your moment because Peter is not alone y'all 11 other disciples hear exactly what Peter hears 
But 11 other disciples miss their moment. And we will forever remember that Peter was the one that walked on water. In fact, the Bible doesn't even name the other disciples. We know who the 12 are, but the Bible doesn't even name all the other disciples because the Bible is intent on focusing on the fact that Peter is the one that says I'm not going to miss my moment and I want to speak a word over your life today right now that this is the day you draw a line in the sand and you say I will not miss my moment God I don't care what I have to do I don't care how many nights I have to lose sleep, but I will not miss my moment. I don't care if I fail. If I fail, that's okay. I can live with it, but I will not miss my moment. I believe God is releasing that word in this room right now. You cannot afford to miss your moment. There is a connection coming for somebody. You're about to meet somebody that will change your life. And you cannot afford, I feel God, to miss your moment. Somebody is about to come into an opportunity to get something that you don't feel like is for you. Because you can't believe that God would bless you like this. I want to tell you, don't miss your moment. The water is calling you because you are a water walker. And if you step out, you will walk on top of what other folk will drown in. In. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. I release that word all over this house. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. I'm in a moment of faith right now in my ministry because I believe God wants to bless Link Church with a place of worship. And, and I'm feverishly and I'm tenaciously looking every day because I don't want to miss my moment and I don't want to miss God. And I may not be sure if it's God, but at least I'm going to try in case I happen to miss my moment. And I release the anointing that's on my life, on your life, to not miss your moment. I don't care what I have to go through, but I'm not about to be out here missing moments. I wish I had some help in the building today. You think think that this is the season where you should relax because of COVID. Well, people in this season are getting moments all over the place. And when I scan the topography of this world, and when I look at churches all over, they're getting a building. So why can't I get a building? I don't want to miss my moment. I release it in this house right now. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. Hey, Shama. You can't miss your moment. That's what faith is about. If you, if you had to have all of the answers, you wouldn't need faith. There is a window of opportunity for you. And you can't miss your moment I hear God right there for somebody you're feeling it in your in your spirit and you're sensing it that there's a moment that God wants to expose to you and you cannot afford to to stay on the boat like everybody else I got something else for you. Here's another thing about water walkers. Water walkers let their feet do the talking. <laughs> oh, say, water walkers let their feet do the talking. Nowhere in the text do we see Peter talking about walking on the water. 
He doesn't say, yo, John, I, I, I'm, I'm about to walk on this water, but you know what? I'm not really sure how it's going to work out, so let me just grab a sandwich with, but I'm uh, a sandwich real quick, but I'm about to walk on this water. You don't see Peter you know, feeling the temperature of the water and saying, you know what, I'm about to, I'm about to walk on this water. I just want to check real quick to sense if this temperature is right. You don't see Peter saying to the other disciples, what do you guys think about me walking on this water? I believe God wants us to walk on this water, but, but should we pray real quick? Should we breathe a word of prayer? Mm -hmm. should, should, should we go on fast? Thing real quick. Uh, uh, let's let's talk about walking on this water. Y'all know how deep we get. When the moment comes, that's not the time for you to pray. <laughs> when the moment comes, that's not the time for you to fast. That's the time for you to step out. And water walkers let their feet do the talking. I want to tell you that. It's not your feelings that affirm your faith. It is your feet that affirm your faith. All throughout scripture, it is about what people do that gives us the understanding that they actually had faith. James says, faith without works is dead. James says, show me your faith by your faith. And I'll show you my faith by my works. We know Abraham had faith because he actually left his house and went to a land that God would show him. He let his feet <laughs> do the talking. We know that Moses had faith because when God brought them to the Red Sea. Moses stretched out his rod and he walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. He let his feet do the talking. We know that Joshua had faith because when they came to the city of Jericho, Joshua did not try to trump God and out Think him. Joshua did not call a prayer meeting. Joshua did not say it's time for us to go on fasting. Joshua said we have got to let our feet do the talking. And if we believe that Jericho is for us, then we've got to get to marching. Mm -hmm. We got to get to stepping. Yeah, because your feet have to do the talking. And Peter steps out, not based on what he sees. He steps out based on what he knows. There is a difference, y'all. You're looking for it instead of knowing it. Peter steps out because there's something in, he, in him that knows he can walk on this water. And the Bible says that Peter steps out of the boat and he walks on water, y'all. Show me or tell me somebody else that's ever done that. I'll wait. He walks on water because he knows that his faith is strong enough to walk on water. <laughs> and what is dope about this story is that Peter, he actually does it. Because he shows us that faith has the ability to walk on water. That's level one. Because there's levels to this. <laughs> Peter has level one faith. Walking on water is level one faith. I'm not talking about that specific act, but I'm talking about the initial stepping out 
on faith is level one. And I believe most Christians don't struggle so much, sometimes, but not so much, to be level one faith Christians. Because we can exercise enough faith to walk on water. <laughs> we can exercise enough faith to start the business. We can exercise enough faith to make the application. We can exercise enough faith to believe that God can open the door. But the text shows me a problem, and y'all know I love problems, because the text shows me that Peter encounters an issue because he has level one faith. And the Bible says in verse 30, but when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. Now that'll make you pause. It'll make you pause initially because you can't see wind. <laughs> what does wind look like? What? How big is wind? What's the color of wind? You can't see wind. The Bible says when he saw the wind, Peter is having trouble, not with the water, but Peter is having trouble with the wind. He can't see wind. All he can see is the effects of the wind. Mm. You can't see COVID. I feel God. All you can see is the effects of COVID. And what most Christians struggle with is not the water. You're struggling with the wind. Yeah, hey, yeah. There's levels to this. Yeah. There's levels to this. You're not struggling with starting the business. You're struggling with the fact that now clients are not paying. It's windy. Yeah. It's windy in your life. You're not struggling because you've gotten diagnosed with cancer and you have to go through cancer treatments. But it's getting windy in your family and now you're struggling in your faith because of how this sickness is affecting your family. It's windy. What most Christians struggle with is not the water, it's the wind, Michelle. Because you have stepped out here and say, God, for you I live and for you I die. But God, it's really windy out here. It's tight cold out here. God, how come you didn't tell me that when I was going to walk on this water, I would not only have to deal with the water, but I would have to deal with the wind that I cannot see. And you are fighting something in your faith that you cannot see. I feel my help right here. You are fighting a force that is blowing in your life that you cannot see and you are encouraged because you are walking on water but now you are discouraged because you cannot sense where the wind is going to blow next and the wind is so unpredictable and you don't know how life is going to hit you next you don't know what trial you're going to go through next and there's levels to this I want to increase your faith today and say you gotta step it up and level up you gotta go to the next level where you just don't walk on water but you can walk on wind I feel my help in here how can you walk on wind when you can walk on wind when you trust and focus on Jesus you can walk on wind because you're not so concerned about the wind you are walking on the water and you've got to know that when you step out on faith this not just the water you're going to have to contend with you're about to contend with the wind I'm coming for somebody today who's feeling like life is blowing you in all different directions. I'm coming for somebody today that has not leveled up because there are levels to this and you have got to increase your faith. I feel like somebody in here today 
Lift your hands in this moment because you have got to increase your faith faith Mm -hmm. and the faith that it takes to walk on water is different than the faith that it takes to walk on wind and it's windy right now and you're not sure how you're gonna go through this season but the thing about the wind is that Peter doesn't have enough faith for the wind but Jesus does Mm -hmm. yeah 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 Jesus has the key to you getting through your windy season and I'm going to finish it and I'm going to drop it right here because there's levels to this the boat is a level it's a non-starter it's the folk that can't get out the starting blocks but most of us have stepped out And we're on the water. But the next level, the second level, or the third level, however you look at it, is can you handle the wind? Did you bring your windbreaker? Are you wind resistant? That when the trials of life blow you, You're not carried away with every wind of doctrine, but you are steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And if God called you out the boat, then he has called you to withstand the wind. And this is why Jesus says, Peter, oh you of little faith, Why did you doubt? What trips me out, Rita, what trips me out is that Peter doesn't get any praise from Jesus for walking on the water. You would think that Jesus would be like, son, you did a good job. You did better than all those folk in the boat. But he chastises Peter. He rebukes him and said, you got small faith. Why? Because there's levels to this. And Peter had everything he needed to walk on the water and withstand the wind. Peter had faith. He had security. He had Jesus. He had assurance. He had previous wins. With every step, Peter was winning. And you would think that your previous wins gives you power and fuel to face the wind. Well, there's levels to this. Everyone stand and we up out of here. I'm vacillating between... Is this a two-part sermon? Because I believe God wants to talk to us about the wind. Because that's where our issue is. God wants to talk to us about what happened with Peter and his doubt that caused him to sink. And I ain't got time to work it today. But perhaps we'll pick it up next week for part two. And you have to be here so you can get fuel and insight to handle the wind. You've stepped out, but it's windy on your job, in your business. It's blowing. And you feel like you're sinking. And then God has the audacity to turn around and say, you have little faith. Are you kidding me, God? I stepped out here. Are you kidding me? How do I have little faith? Every head bowed, every eye closed. We got to get up out of here. But I believe somebody today needs to level up because there's levels to this. Somebody that's watching me online needs prayer. Type prayer in the chat. Somebody in this room needs to come to this altar 
because you need you need you need you need focus in here you need you need you need faith for the wind you need faith for what you're going through you feel like you can do the water thing, but you feel like you can't do the wind thing. Come right now. Come right now. I'm not even going to wait too long. Come right now. There's somebody else. Come right now. There's somebody else. Yes, 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 yes. Come, come. You need this thing called faith for the wind. There's levels to this. There's levels to this. Before COVID, you had a measure of faith. But now you need a greater level. If you're going to survive and not get blown out of church, if you're going to survive and not get blown out of the kingdom of God, you need to level up. God, I thank you today. Hallelujah. God, I thank you that we know that we are water walkers. But I also thank you, God, for the insight to know that you have not just called us to walk on water, but you've called us to withstand the wind. And I release a greater level of faith in this church. Hallelujah. I release a greater anointing of faith amongst your people. Faith not just for the water, but faith for the wind. Faith not just for sickness, but faith to deal with family. Faith not just for the promotion, but faith to deal with the co-workers. I release faith right now because the wind is blowing. The wind of fear is blowing. The wind of doubt is blowing. You are the one. I release confidence in you. Cast not away your confidence which has great recompense of reward. You are the person for the job. If God wanted somebody else, he would have called somebody else to walk on the water. Don't get nervous about the wind because you are called to withstand the wind. I feel your faith growing right now. In this moment, I feel your faith rising. Hallelujah. I feel your faith burning in the name of Jesus. I feel your faith igniting in the name of Jesus. You're about to go after it. That thing that's keeping you up at night. You're hesitating. You're nervous. You're afraid. You're scared. You're wondering if it's God. I release an anointing to step out of the boat. In the name of Jesus, right now, you got to step out of fear and step into your faith moment. This is your moment. I feel God right now. You can't miss it. I don't care what devil is on your life. I don't care what devil is attacking your mind. You can't miss your moment. This is the season to make that investment. Mm -hmm. This is the season to sign that contract because God doesn't want you to miss your moment. If you have to crawl to touch the hem of Christ's garment, then you gotta crawl. If you gotta get your fingernails dirty, you gotta get your fingernails dirty. If you have to be looked at weird and looked at cross-eyed and looked at like you're nothing, then you gotta do whatever you gotta do. You gotta make it to the fringe of Jesus because God wants you to step out and not miss your moment. Lift your hands in this moment moment today. I release it. You got to catch it. Mm -hmm. Heaven is open. I declare it. Heaven is open and faith is released in this room. Faith is dropping in this room. I release the gift of faith in this room. Somebody's about to catch not the gift of word of wisdom, not the gift of prophecy, but somebody is about to catch the gift of faith. I drop it in this anointing anointing. I drop it in this anointing. Right now, I drop it in this moment. Somebody worship God right here. Somebody open your mouth and receive it right here. Mm -hmm. This is a different moment today, y'all. This is a different moment today, y'all. You got to catch the faith that God is dropping. He's dropping it. 
He's dropping it. He's dropping it. He's dropping it. He's dropping it. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in this church. We thank you, God, for what you're doing individually in the lives of your people. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our city. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our communities. Because, God, there's levels to this. And we're taking the level up. We thank you for your power and your mercy today. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody clap your hands. Come on, y'all. I need you to clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, keep it going. I need somebody to clap violently. Like you know God is releasing it. Like you know God is doing something in our church. I need somebody to clap, clap, clap and sound the alarm in the atmosphere. Hallelujah.